Hi, so anybody who's actually had anything to do with the Arduino will know this company, Alago. They've been doing a lot of electronic components. And a while ago, they launched themselves into these kind of 3D printers. These are the liquid resin 3D printers using a UV light to cure the resin. And of course, it's coming up to Christmas, and these are uh, 280 pounds, actually. Now, we do have a discount code, and that's in the uh, description below, but it kind of brings it into that realm of Christmas present, which is really quite clever of Elegoo, actually, to do a bit of a push, offering a discount around just before Christmas time, and as part of that rush to do that, they've sent me one. So this has been sent to us to unbox and do a review. So we're going to do exactly that. They sent us this and we get to keep it. Yay! And we also get to have a look at it. Now obviously I've done a little bit of looking on the internet, but there's nothing like getting your hands on something, is there? So in a minute we're going to unbox this. Now this stuff uses this resin. There are a whole bunch of these resins. This is a standard resin which apparently is a bit more brittle and so although it makes great model parts and this was uh, 500 uh, grams or 500 milliliters and I think it cost me about 20 pounds. Instead of making models out of this if I want to make engineering parts I need something with a degree of flexibility and for that they do an ABS like resin. It isn't ABS, it's ABS-like. That is, the uh, resulting print has a little bit of springiness to it, and so this is going to be more appropriate for those kind of engineering jobs you want to do. Also, I have red, so we've got a couple of resins. Uh, so I'd like to do other things with this, and one of the things I'd like to do is stick some graphene in here and see if we can make some conductive parts out of that. So I'll certainly be doing that as a part of the experiment. But first things first, let's basically just take this out of the box. So just opening the box is actually very nicely packed. We've got these great big foamy bits, and all over the box it says, Fragile, please, with blah, blah, blah. Because you know what people are like. They, if they can see something that's fragile and they want to kick it across the floor, they will do. Uh, looks like we've got some, uh, yep, yeah, some FET film. That will become obvious later. Some spare FET film, a user, user manual. An awful lot more padding, which is kind of cool. It's nice to see all that padding there, actually. Now, I didn't ask for a wash station. I am told they're around about 30 quid, mysterious box marked toolkit. I'm told they're about 30 pounds to buy, and I'm told they're well worth having. Now I'm a terrible cheapskate and if I can get away without spending money I will do and basically all the wash station is is a Tupperware container filled with isopropyl alcohol. You wash your resin off with that. The wash station has a little stirrer on the bottom and it's a wash and cure station so when it comes out of this it's not strictly cured it needs a little bit of extra time under the UV to cure it and the wash and cure station will do that by shining a UV light on it. Equally, I figured I could dip it in some IPA and stick it on a window ledge, but I have been told by reliable sources that at the, what the price they ask for the wash station makes the wash station actually worth it. But I didn't go for the wash station. This arrived. I'm grateful to have it. And um, I didn't want to ask for a wash station that I didn't feel I particularly needed. That's it. it, it that was a dramatic unboxing, wasn't it? We just took out the foam and there's the thing already so we'll take this stuff off so it's out the box i've taken the plastic bag off it and i was mildly surprised by something what i was surprised by was that even the inside of this has got a whole load of packing foam on it i think that's kind of cool actually as um, these things do get knocked around a little bit and i thought that was super cool there we go there is that bad boy out that is the uh, print plate is the print foot that lowers up and down now, just to qualify what I said earlier, that £30 price tag would be for a second-hand one. The price does vary. It varies between sort of, I think, about £90 and uh, £120-ish, I guess, depending which country you're in and um, where you buy it from to a degree. And it has been suggested to me that other sources of UV might actually be a good idea. So, you know, things like aquarium lights, maybe those nail cure lights. Of course, you've got the glue cure lights. And if you're a real cheapskate like me, you just stick it in the sun. But there is the basic printer and a beautifully packed, hey? And obviously the little acrylic case here, which is your UV protection case. So you're not supposed to um, stare directly into this when it's running, clearly. You put the case on top to protect your eyes. It's got a nice bit of plastic film. There we go. So these things. 
these things actually uh, have becoming um, the thing to have and they are somewhat impressive in terms of their technology in my mind. Now it's going to be, uh, you know, horses for courses, it's whatever you want the uh, job to do when you're using a 3D printer. But of course a filament 3D printer is um, restricted in its resolution to the thickness of the filament that you're attempting to print. And of course that's uh, uh, 1.3 millimeters or something. These things, what they actually do is use a UV light on, underneath here and then they have a LCD screen on top and the LCD screen displays a, an image and that image is a, like a mask and is a slice of the thing that you're trying to print. So the resolution on these can go down to 50 microns and you can see that in the resulting print. The resulting prints tend to be very much cleaner uh, and that has always impressed me. Now, when we take that thing apart, there we go. That is the resin well. So that goes on top of here. There's an LCD screen under here. So that's the bit that actually shines the UV light in the slices for you. Your resin goes in here. And that piece of plastic there is a fluoropolymer. And nothing is meant to stick to it because, of course, when the resin is against it and you shine that UV light on it, that resin cures. And the resin cures by sticking to that, or rather, when it, when it does cure, it sticks to that. But it also sticks to this foot plate. Now, this foot plate then moves up and then back down to the next slice width. And that moving up is what separates it from that fluoropolymer screen. And when I said it will become obvious later, these are spare fluoropolymer screens. So we have some spare screens. We have our resin well sitting right here. There's a little protective piece on there I'll take off in a minute. That thing, it's tight like a drum. And that sits there and takes the resin. And as the resin is then pulled up by the foot, it's meant to separate from that. And that is one of the key failure points of running one of these machines. Sometimes, it doesn't pull off quite as well as you would want it to. And I've um, seen a couple of tricks that we're going to try to see if we can actually make that work first time. Because I have heard that there's quite a bit of a learning curve on here in getting nice prints out of it until you get a few of those tricks sorted. But in essence, it's quite a simple machine. We have an image display underneath here. We have our well. We put the resin. This moves up and down in the thickness of the slice, and every time it's got to a slice, it shines the light, slice, shines light, slice, and so it's built up by pulling it from this resin pool on this foot that's attached to there. So there's a couple of jobs to do with this, and the first thing is to actually set that foot. So the parts of it, we've got a UV light here, we've got a screen underneath, we've got a print well, we have our resin, and this is responsible for moving it up out of the resin as the UV light shines off and on in that mask field that we were just talking about. Okay, now we come to the mysterious toolkit. So we open up that toolkit. We've got a nice scraper there, actually. It's clearly for as a parting tool, some Allen keys and some screws that remain as yet mysterious. Although I'm sure I'll find out what they want, uh, where they should go. Then there's these little, little hats which I think are probably not little, little hats, they're probably filters. There's a bit of uh, gauze in there, steel gauze, for filtering the resin. Uh, that, I happen to know, is for cleaning um, the resin up off this face here, for instance. You clean, give it a clean. Uh, I only know that because I saw a video with it. Then we have the power brick and the UK cable, which is cool. And yeah, that's kind of sweet. There's a little set of snips here for separating the sprue from the model, which I thought was cool. This is an angle attachment. It actually goes on there and then you can uh, fit, there we go, it goes on like that, the foot goes on there and it holds the foot at an angle and your resin can drip back into your resin tray. They've even supplied a little USB because this thing actually, you do most of your work, if they do all of your work on the computer, you put your file onto there and then push your file into the machine. So that's for file transfer. That's cute actually. There's some carbon filter little masks for you. That, I am told reliably by a very good friend of mine, is the foot that goes on there. And they've even supplied a few rubber gloves. So it's kind of a ready to go little kit as it were. I like that actually. So let's put the foot on, which clearly just fits around here. 
So this has been a relatively detailed unboxing because to be honest, I'm actually quite excited by this. I've always thought that the filament printers were a bit disappointing. They looked a bit sort of step and a bit rugged and you had to do things like wash them in acetone and they had a problem with the cleavage line, it being a, a point of failure and all sorts of stuff, which um, put me off it a little bit, to be honest. And I've looked at these before, but of course they have been super expensive until this uh, LCD little methodology has been um, broken down into these smaller units. So it, to me, it's suddenly become very approachable and I've got really quite excited about it. But that's the basic unboxing and it appears to be a, a complete kit. I remember these came separately, okay? Everything else came in the box, but the resins came separately. So it's been quite exciting for me. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting to grips with it. That's the end of the unboxing video. Of course, we've still got to uh, finish the setup, which looks really basic. And I mean, it's not much more than putting that foot on and aligning that foot. So we've got to get um, the setup finished, which we'll do in a, a different video. We've obviously got to set up the software. Remember that USB? The software is on the USB. So we've got the software to set up, we've got this little bit of setup to do, and then of course we're going to do some runs with it, and we're going to try and see how it actually prints in practice, and then I've got a whole load of experimentation that I want to do. But I'm going to break with tradition, because normally what I do with these things is turn them on and poke at the screen with my fat stubby fingers. But on this occasion, because I'm actually really quite interested in it, I'm going to read the manual. So I'll have a read at the manual, and then we'll get that set up, and then obviously when we've done the setup of the machine, the setup of the software, and talked about that a little bit, then we can do some printing on it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the basic unboxing video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to watch out for the rest in this particular playlist, and it will be on its own playlist. And please remember to like and subscribe.